Welcome, PayPal. Um, I think we just want to sort of meet you first. So if we could just if we could just get a little bit about you, your background, maybe your education and what you do now, I'd love to hear. Sure. Uh, you want to start, Darwin? Sure. I'm Darwin. I'm the executive producer for Design at PayPal. Uh, among uh, things I'm responsible for, one is uh, the campus liaison, and so that's why my name is on there, um, even though this is not my team. This is the, the broader UED team uh, or the design team at PayPal. Um, so we work on the design language, uh, design culture, design spaces, everything that the team needs to be uh, to use to be successful. I've uh, been with PayPal for about five years. Um, I actually didn't come through a design organization. I came through technology. Um, and uh, my education is actually uh, technology and finance. So I'm a numbers geek well, and a computers geek, if you will. Hi, uh, I'm Damon Bakun. I've been at PayPal for about five years. Um, I, I originally started studying marketing. I was always interested in, in marketing and also the creative aspect of marketing. So I had a minor and uh, at the time it was called commercial art. Um, that lasted for about one year when I had to start taking business classes and I quickly dropped marketing and moved into um, design full time. Um, so I transferred to a different art school fully focused on, on design. Um, it's been an interesting path getting to PayPal. Uh, through the years, I've, I've worked as an uh, environmental graphic designer, worked, working with an architecture company. I've worked uh, in packaging design, worked um, in retail and e-commerce, which eventually uh, helped me get into uh, product, product design and user experience design. So it's been a an interesting path getting to digital products, um, but uh, all in all, I think it's been it's been helpful to kind of go through different aspects of things that interest you, and you'll s eventually find how they all come together in your career. Hi, my name is Maddie. Um, I recently graduated from Carnegie Mellon in May and joined PayPal in I think beginning. Um, so I was an intern two summers before that um, as a UX design intern. Um, and I actually started out in school in, as an architecture major. Um, I did that for like two years. And then after doing an internship at an architecture firm, I realized I didn't really like drafting as much. So I had a second major. It was human computer interaction. Um, so it was like kind of like a focus in interaction design. And then after doing my PayPal internship, I realized I really liked it and all the projects and the people here. So I ended up back on the team this summer. So that was my path. Tim? Um, Tim uh, Rezadek. I've been at PayPal for four and a half years. Um, and my educational background is uh, brief. I studied commercial art briefly, where I kind of learned the foundations of design. Um, and from there, I'm basically self taught. Uh, from experience, and I, so I've been working on web design uh, and marketing-related work for a long time. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm a designer on Tim's team. Um, I graduated a couple of years ago from an art school in Florida, and right out of there, I spent a year at an advertising agency in New York, and then right after that, I moved here to work for PayPal. I've been here for about a year and a half. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy. Um, I come from a small island in the Philippines called Cebu. Any Filipinos here? No? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, so back in my hometown, there are very little um, schools that offer uh, traditional like design, web design, all that stuff. So I went into computer science thinking that I would learn... Back then I was very much into games, so I was, I was thinking that, oh, computer science, I might make games out of this. But eventually, it taught me how to manage infrastructure and all that, which I wasn't really interested in. So luckily, the internet was there. I researched everything I could about design, bought all the books, like saw all the tutorials, learned through in the .com and all that stuff. And eventually, um, s started at these traditional graphic design firms who didn't know how to do web. So I was there to answer all their web needs, because they were so into print. And after that, after a few startups later, uh, I got in touch with PayPal. It was really, it was really a good opportunity for me because um, having been living on the other side of the world, I was able to 
moved to San Francisco, and it was very amazing how they cater to the global audience as well. So that's why I'm here. Oh, actually, yeah. And there's one more um, person on our team here, uh, Tim Agnew, who is responsible for um, recruiting for our internship program and our recent college graduate program. And so he's joining us here as well. Excellent. Hi, Tim. Um, I, I ask about your backgrounds uh, specifically because I'd kind of like to put you back to where you were when you did get out of college or when you, when you were starting out in the industry. Um, I think it's great that you have so many, we have so many varied backgrounds up here. If you were in the position you were in once, coming into this industry fresh, what advice would you give yourself? What would you say not to do that you did? Or what would you say to do that you didn't? <laughs> Maddie, you've got the, uh, uh, got you've got the so. talking <laughs> stick. <laughs> um, so I've only been here for, I think, like four months. Uh, I definitely learned a lot. I think the biggest thing that I had to learn as from joining from school is that it's like not just straight up like design work like working in sketch and working in photoshop and illustrator is like one part of it that you pretty much have solid down in school you're like that's all you've been doing for like four years um a lot of it is like the soft skills which is like communicating with like engineers and the product people who are definitely not the same background as you and a lot of the times when you're working in school you're working in like um, mostly with other designers when you work on like team projects for example I in my senior year capstone it was like four designers and we all had to collaborate and it wasn't very it wasn't as difficult as collaborating with like business people or like engineers because they all come from the same background and you're like having the same I guess like process work but then when you're collaborating with people who have separate backgrounds you kind of have to like work around how to explain things with people and a lot of um, product design I think not just extends to product design itself but also like um, going back to communication design where you're trying to like communicate your design to other people who don't see exactly the same eye that you're seeing so I think that's what I learned most. I would say um, piggybacking on that working with other people and, and learning how to work with um, different personalities, um, cross-functional partners. So uh, coming from design school, a lot of times we work on our, our own projects. Um, we have to re represent our own best work on our portfolios. Um, so a lot of times there's a lot of heads down work. You're focused on your own work and you're not really paying attention to, well, I have to learn how to um, work with 40 other people and um, so that could be tricky so I would say um, as you're starting out keep that in mind and and look for opportunities of of how to partner with other teams other people who who might know more than you in a different area try to learn as much as you can from them it'll help you grow it'll help you be more diverse uh, in the long run and and that that all comes to to help you in your career um, over the course of the rest of your life. I'll just add to that real quickly. So uh, one thing I'll add is uh, I would, one thing I did was as a freelancer, I, uh, instead of letting work come to me, I found companies that I wanted to work for and found out what they needed and use that as a way to kind of push my skills. Um, and in that, I learned a lot about the things I do like to do, things I don't like to do, things that if you, if you just fit in one specific role and you just do the same thing day in and day out you're not going to learn that oh there's this other really diverse or specialized um, aspect of the business that I could be doing that I really like a lot or I hate it and I never want to do it um, and so I would recommend doing that if you can if you're a freelancer try to take on things that you don't you're not quite sure you can do or if you're if you can get a job at a small agency where they require you to just figure things out um, I think that will go that goes a long way to learning um, and then in the long run, if you end up at a place, a big place like PayPal, where you do end up, you know, fitting into kind of a smaller box, all that educational background helps you to kind of either A, problem solve what you're working on yourself, or at least, um, and I'm going to go full circle here, help you relate to the other people that you actually need to be involved with to get the, the project done. So if you can speak to the engineers, if you can speak to the business development people, um, that goes a long way to get their respect, and you guys are speaking the same, same language, so um, you can actually get things done in 
less than 250 emails, <laughs> ideally. 240. Uh, my advice <coughs> to my old, <coughs> excuse me, to my former self: uh, stay awake in class. Um, <coughs> I'm actually advice. looking over at Rue back there because I think he's got a full course load and he's playing on the soccer team and, and I'm glad, I'm <clears throat> in a way I'm glad he didn't come back and, and work for us right away uh, during the winter break because I tried doing that in school and I was just left exhausted. Um, so I'm, I'm really anxious to have him back on the team in January. Um, but I think the other things that, that I learned um, <clears throat> is it's great to be, to walk into a situation um, as intimidating as it sounds to be the dumbest person in the room. Um, I always came, I, when I came out of school, I thought I, I had all the answers, and in some cases I went into a room and may have been the, one of the smarter people in the room, but you don't really learn a whole lot. Um, when you're the dumbest person in the room, you act like a sponge, and you can really learn a lot from everyone around you, especially since you're just coming out from school. There's just so much um, that people in industry can have to share with you. Um, so um, I worked in a company where I think 50% of the people were either Nobel laureates or Stanford grads, and definitely I was the dumbest person in the room, maybe the dumbest person in the company, but I learned a lot. Uh, I like that a lot. Come out of school thinking uh, that you are ready to learn anything that comes at you. So um, despite how much you think you might know coming out of school, uh, you really don't know really anything, which is what I felt like when I got out of school, because I started an ad agency and I didn't know how to work with clients. I didn't know how to work with developers or really talk to anyone in a, in a team, despite all the team projects I had at school. Um, but throughout working at ad agency, it was, it was easier to work with clients uh, the more I did it. And learning is a, is a hard process, but um, you'll find yourself learning something in every single project you do, no matter what it is, um, no matter what client it's for, even it's, if it's for something boring like Kleenex or... Lysol. <laughs> uh, you can find something good out of it. Um, and I still find myself with that mindset today of go into it, trying to learn whatever you can. Don't, don't think you know everything about it, um, or else you'll just have a, a bad time in projects that you work on, no matter where you are, really. Can, can, I add, uh, can I add a little something to, I think, both of those last two comments? As much as it is important to be humble and, and learn from the people around you, um, at the same time, um, good hiring managers, good managers want to hear your, your opinions. So um, sometimes working with, with young graduates right out of school, um, it can be like, it could be a little painful trying to get their opinions um, because they are so, so um, careful about what they say. And um, I think it's, it's a process. You have to kind of feel it out to find out when is the right time to share your, your opinions and but at the same time look for those don't don't be too reserved um, because you have a ton of great education here um, you have a ton of um, I mean it's I've seen the work we've all seen the work it's world-class work so you guys should also be confident that you have great great ideas to bring to the table um, share them but at the same time make sure you're learning make sure you're absorbing but don't don't let that hold you back. Well, let me ask. Um, since you've seen portfolios here, um, it's often come up how much of a point of view you want to see in any given project. Do you want to see a strong, strong point of view from a student, or do you, are you looking for something more, uh, more general? Um, can, can you go a little deeper on that? Uh, sure. Um, do you want something that really is all about um, the student, their body of work, or the, or the designer, their body of work, something that's really, um, that's really them distilled into a project? Or are you looking for something that looks like um, strong client work? Does that make sense? Sure. Um, personally, I think it could be either. Um, I, th I think your work is going to represent you and where you are. Um, so if it's, if it's work that represents your interests, that tells hiring managers a lot about you. That's where you are right now. Um, if you have a different type of portfolio that's focused on internship projects or uh, something else or freelance projects, I think that's also great. I think um, don't try to force your portfolio into one specific thing. Let it represent where you are and who you are. Um, and I think the rest will kind of come naturally. Maybe, Jeremy, thoughts on... 
Yeah, what's your advice for your young self? My advice? Yeah. Oh, I think um, pretty much they summed it up already. But um, to reiterate, I think it's very important to be humble to because you don't know what you don't know. Always be open to other people's ideas and understand from their point of view what they're trying to convey. So always keep that in mind and I guess fake it till you make it. <laughs> um, one question that always comes up in terms of portfolios is um, along the lines of the previous question. Um, sh are you looking for generalists or are you looking for people who sort of focus early on in general? Uh, <laughs> Generally, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I think the tendency, well, sorry, I'll take that back. But with student work, I, I think if you focus too early, unless you're really exceptional um, or you're extremely, you know, dead set passionate on one thing, I don't think that that's a great idea personally um, because your work as a student largely reflects kind of work you've selected to do yourself and whatnot. And in or, the we're or we're assigned. Or were assigned, but uh, you, there's a lot of I don't you know I don't know what schools like here, but there in school typically there's a lot of freedom to make up the um, uh, customer persona, the client, and and the need and all that. Um, and it, I I think that if you start to specialize like that, you're going to end up you end up looking for a job that doesn't exist, that's made up by you. Um, where if you can show a little bit more of a general skill set and kind of an openness and um, a broader range of skills then you can find that there are a number of jobs that you could fit into. And then from there, you know, when a lot of, Damon, you can jump on this if you want, but, you know, we'll, we'll hire people um, thinking, okay, well, we need a particular role filled. And then once that person comes in and starts to develop and we start to get a sense of who they are and where their passion and, and real strengths are, um, we're a big enough organization that we try to, we generally, I think, try to, cater to the person's skills like if they're if they're particularly talented at one thing um i want to start developing work that um empowers that uh once once we kind of once i can kind of figure out who that person is within the greater organization so that's the long-winded answer to i wouldn't specialize too early unless you're fucking awesome <laughs> at it uh and like ready to just be like the best person at it at the company you get hired at I mean, I'm going to have to agree with that. Um, I think it kind of goes back to you don't know what you don't know yet. And until you start doing that in real life, then, you know, you may find another interest and uh, really develop that. Um, I know for myself, uh, I went through three majors before I graduated. I think Maddie talked about changing majors. Uh, Damon changed careers kind of <laughs> a few times. So, like, if you lock yourself in a little too early, you may end up doing something you don't like. Um, kind of on a tangent, I, I know people that went to dental school, um, came out and only then realized they're going to be staring into people's mouths for the next 40 years. So when you specialize too early, you may not know what you're getting into. All right. <laughs> uh, here's a door I'd kind of like to open. Um, I would love to hear if you guys have any uh, particularly horrible or eye-openingly beautiful stories about when you were first interviewing, when you were first actually out in the world, and when you were sort of raw and talking to people for the first time. Um, have you anything like that? Okay. Or was it smooth as silk? <laughs> uh, Tim might be able to attest to don't take your interview out on the busy streets of Manhattan. Uh, it's pretty loud out there. So <laughs> just uh, keep, in, keep in mind where you're going to have your interview and sort of set aside some time to set up um, sort of like your own sh uh, schedule. So uh, we're going to go over this and then this. And uh, one thing that I've learned from interviewing people at, at PayPal myself is um, try not to talk too much about your work because I would like to ask you questions about it. <laughs> so um, if you keep talking and we're running into the running over time, then uh, I'm not going to get to answer the questions about you that I would like to know. So, um, what are some of the more insightful questions you've had interviewees ask? Uh, or is that a part of the process? Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure actually. Um, a lot of people just ask what we do, which is a hard question to answer, which goes back to being a generalist. So, uh, it's, it's hard to be like, oh, well, we do web design because we also do 
illustrations when it comes to uh, certain projects and it, we have to do other things when it comes to different projects. So um, that's one of the harder questions I've been asked, which is a, a pretty important question to know what you're doing when you're getting a job. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I have to piggyback on the, the generalist idea, of be a generalist. Uh, the, the best question actually, so when I interviewed at PayPal four and a half years ago, it was crazy. I think I did 13 interviews, 13 separate interviews over three days, um, which is wild. And uh, the, actually, the last person that interviewed me, it, it, so you can, I, I don't know if you guys have done any job interviews or anything like that, but, you know, it's basically, if you have 13 people interviewing you, you ask, answer the same exact question 13 times. It's like, what do you do? Where did you train? What are you interested in? Tell me about this project. So, um, but this, so the most interesting question in that uh, was the last person who asked me, why in the world do you want to work at a huge company like this? Uh, and frankly, I didn't have an, a great answer for him, but I thought that uh, the question was very insightful and uh, actually made me, it was something I hadn't considered when I was doing the other 12 interviews is, do I actually want to work at this company? Um, like, you know, I, I knew I wanted, I knew that PayPal was interesting to me and had opportunity, but uh, he kind of brought to light that, you know, it's this megalithic corporation that is full of you know, tons of different people, and it's confusing, and it's a, it's a huge structure. Um, so, at, at any way, at any rate, that was the most interesting question I've been asked because it was completely outside of design and skills and and all that. Um, and, anyways, a good question you might ask yourself if you guys are taking interviews in the near future is: Is this a company I actually want to work for? Or should I work for a smaller company or one that does better work for people or that doesn't run a website that my grandma's on posting pictures of? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think it's important that uh, the interviews actually, we're interviewing you as well as you should be interviewing us. Um, make sure it's the right fit for what you want to do. Make sure that uh, the hiring manager is someone who's going to be supportive of you. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to have someone that really believes in you and has your back, um, can align what you do well to the vision of the company. Um, I've been in situations where my boss was only out for themselves. It's like the most horrible working condition ever. Um, and it's for a large company. But when you align yourself with somebody who believes in you and who's going to be your best advocate for getting the right projects to promote you and things like that, uh, that's what you want to look for. I'd just add to that. Um, it's Think of them not only as a hiring manager, but also as potentially a future mentor. Um, that relationship is really important. So if your first objective is to find a job to pay for food and pay for rent, um, that only goes so far. Obviously, that's really important. Um, you should be looking for companies that you believe in. Um, you should look for people that you could work for, that you know that you can learn from. Um, I would say in terms of preparing for interviews, research who you're going to talk to, know who you're talking to, know what they've done in the past, know if you want to work for them. Um, I'm sure that there's um, blog posts by these people, there's videos of these people. Um, so get to know them a little bit. Do, that's part of your job, getting ready for the interview. Um, understand what the company's doing, look to see what news is about the company, um, sort of current news. All of that's really important. And um, to Darren's point, make sure that the people that you're going to work with can add value to your, your education, because it doesn't end here. Um, your career is going to be an ongoing education, so make sure you're surrounded by the people uh, and the company that, that you're interested in. Um, so I was an intern like a summer before I joined the company, and I realized I really enjoy working with my manager and my team, and that's like 70% why I came back. Um, well, I guess 30% is a little bit more than 30%. It should be the work, too. Um, we were doing exciting things. <laughs> um, and I think a big part of joining a company or any organization that you want to be working for is definitely knowing the people you're going to be working for and whether they'll be supportive people and whether you'll do things that really excite you. And um, it's super helpful to start talking to people and learning what they do every single day to kind of get a sense of what you'll be doing in if you were to join the company. Um, and as for interview practices, um, I had one experience that was really bad, like Squarespace, which is this, like the engine that my portfolio is hosted on was like down the entire day. And then 
I had to like pull out my manual portfolio and just have like a backup PDF just in case like sites have failures or any technical difficulties. So just be, I guess, have an emergency backup in case anything bad ha were to happen. I would say also make sure your uh, your computer is charged. <laughs> make sure you wipe off all of the fingerprints from everybody oh. tapping on it. Mm. Uh, that's a pet pet peeve of, of design hiring managers. If you open up your uh, computer and it's full of of uh, uh, nasty stuff, so uh, just some logistical suggestions. I'll be sure to clean my screen tonight. I don't know. We have a few people that actually went through our interview process. Any comments from? Uh, June or Rue, what did you guys do to prepare? You guys passed. You guys passed the test. So. Uh, <laughs> Things were putting me on the spot there. Um, I felt every time I interviewed, I don't know how many interviews, like four or five. It felt like more of a, like you said, I was interviewing you as much as you were interviewing me, and it was more like a conversation back and forth, rather than me talking about technically uh, about my projects are more about getting a sense the way I, the way I think and if I'm able to explain it in, in details that it makes sense and kind of rationalize my decisions in a way that you can kind of figure out my design thinking. Um, and it, it never really felt intimidated in any way. It was more like kind of me getting to know you and you guys getting to know me. Um, yeah, that's kind of how my experience did. June, you up? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I think, yeah, so I did several interviews, but so I think understanding how you design and like understanding about own design process is kind of help to explain how you like explain, I mean, help to explain to interviewers. And also it helps you, I think, because otherwise, even if you have great design, you can even if you cannot make it again, then I don't know. It feels like it's nothing. So, yep. I think understanding the own design process is important. Besides the smudgy screen, are there any instant turnoffs in an interview? I almost didn't talk to a person because the resume looked really bad. <laughs> And uh, I said, what self-respecting designer would submit a resume to look like that? And it turned out the recruiter actually just scraped everything off of LinkedIn and sent it in. Oh. And uh, after I talked to the person, I said, how can you submit that? And they took a look at it and was like, oh, my God, that's everything I put on LinkedIn but unformatted. Wow. <laughs> wow. Ouch. Um, well, can you oh. – I would say try to understand the culture a little bit. Um, I remember one of – I always wanted to work at MTV when I, when, when I, w <laughs> when I was in design school and, and it was my first interview after school and I wore uh, a really bad suit and I, the guy that was interviewing me had dreadlocks and everybody was like, I just did not fit the culture and it was because I thought I needed to dress that way to go there. Like be yourself, be comfortable, understand who you're interviewing with. If you're, if you're interviewing at a bank, maybe dress appropriately. If you're interviewing somewhere else, dress appropriately. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, so yeah. That we, we had a guy come in in shorts to interview. Ooh. And uh, at him. first I was thinking, was yeah, yeah, it was yeah, fine. It was fine. fine. I, I heard him. <laughs> 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 totally. <laughs> Anyone well, else? I guess I had a story on like yeah. one of my early interviews. Um, starting my design career, uh, one of the hiring managers asked me, what's the first thing you think about when, or what are the first questions that come to your head when designing interfaces? If I ask you guys this question, what would be your answer? Anyone? What's the first thing you ask yourself when designing an interface? Okay, you guys are good. Because <laughs> me, I, I started with, okay, where, what's the layout? What's the size of the screen? All that technical stuff, which is really, it spoke to me like, how much I didn't know what the actual design was before. I thought it was technical execution, sketch, Photoshop, whatever. It's really about thinking about the people who you're um, designing for. So yeah, that was an insight for me. Excellent. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the internship program specifically at PayPal and how it sort of 
feeds the company or, or how, it, <coughs> how, how that sort of works with um, the company structure? Well, I, I'm going to defer to Tim Agnew on a few of these things, but from a design pers team perspective, um, we always want to bring in people with fresh perspectives. Um, we have a lot of senior level folks um, that have been in industry for a while, um, but what we saw is that you know, we didn't have that fresh new perspective. Um, we had people that um, may or may not have been up to speed with the latest technology and, and prototyping tools. I think that was one of the things that we really emphasized on last year. And last year we brought in three folks uh, from AU, and all three of them hit it out of the park and have been offered full-time jobs starting in January. So um, it's been very successful for us. And that fits in with generally what we do throughout the company. The, the internship program really is the primary pathway for people to get full-time jobs out of school. Um, about 60 plus percent of our new grad hires across the business come from our internship program. Uh, in design, it's even higher than that. Um, that's an exceptional track record that's better than usual. We usually only convert oh. Maybe sixty percent of our interns. Not everybody's guaranteed. <laughs> Should I quit while I'm ahead? No, that's I'm three for three right now. It, it's it's awesome when that happens, but we we always want to be clear. Like it's not a given thing. It's it's something where you really have to go into your internship as if you're having a three month long interview. You're showing every day what your capabilities are. You're learning. You're you're connecting with the team. You're you're figuring out how to navigate and get stuff done in the business. And you're walking away at the end of it feeling like you're a much better, stronger candidate. Uh, but the internship program is definitely it's a strong. Uh, formal pro program for across the whole company. This year we're going to have about, this coming summer, we'll have about 200 interns um, uh, you know, in, in every different aspect of the business. It'll only be a handful on the design side, um, but they're very impactful positions and opportunities. Um, and uh, you know, for, for those who are interested in those, you know, you're learning a lot up here about sort of how to interview for those, how to get those if you get that opportunity. Um, you do need to do some research. You know, visit our website. There's a student uh, on PayPal.com's career site. There's a student site uh, that has information. You do need to apply for those positions. Uh, but you can also uh, kind of pipeline uh, resumes directly to me or through Darwin or anyone on the team. Uh, and, and we'll be happy to look at those as well. Keep in mind that we interview, we, it's kind of like a, a funnel. We screen hundreds of people to interview dozens of people to final interview a handful of people and hire one person. Uh, so it's a very competitive process. Uh, so always kind of lead with your best stuff and take it very seriously. Looking for a job, interviewing for a job is a job. Uh, it's not just sort of something that you should dabble in. You, you, you have to really apply yourself and make sure you're, you're doing everything you need to do and, and then taking it really seriously. Dates yet this year? What's that? Do have any dates yet? Uh, no. So this is a good question. So I, I do get that question sometimes. What's the deadline? I get to. There are no such things as deadlines in the in the in the real world. When it, when you're in school, it's like this paper is due on this day, and you can finish it now or later. Um, when we get an opening, when the business says, "I would like an intern who does this," we start immediately and we try to finish it as quickly as we can. We don't wait and say, "Oh well, maybe later some other people will apply." Uh, well, as soon as we find that strongest candidate, we go forward with that candidate. Um, now, we anticipate most of our positions will be open. Uh, we're still opening some now. We'll, we'll be completed by the end of the year, the beginning of January. Um, so, I mean, if you're interested, you need to apply now because we're going to be reviewing and, and screening folks over the next three, four weeks. Uh, if, if, you know, and when specific positions become available, we go to that pool of folks that we've looked at and we pull individuals that match the needs of that position. Um, so, you know, apply now. Uh, and then as individual positions become available, that's when you'll be compared against those and considered for those individual positions. Thank you. I'll just say about the internship program, um, I've been really impressed with the internship program at, Pay uh, at PayPal. Um, the interns that we've brought in, it, it's, been, it's different than other companies that I've worked at where interns sometimes will be getting coffee or something for, for an executive or for, for somebody even pretty junior. Um, seeing the way our internship program was this year was, was pretty incredible. Uh, the talent that the designers were able to contribute uh, to the teams. Um, I think June and Rue could talk about this a little bit maybe. Um, but they were working directly with senior creative directors um, they really became uh, a part of our team quickly. Um, they were working on really significant projects. Uh, one of our interns uh, who actually worked on, on uh, our merchant team has a patent which is submitted right now. So um, 
really significant projects and a great opportunity. So I think Tim does a great job running the program and um, definitely suggests applying if, if you're looking for a good experience. Um, so I was an intern, I think, two years ago. Um, I think that was like the second year they had like the internship program. Um, and outside of design, um, there was like a lot of activities for interns. They have like a sleeping bag event where they give you free sleeping bags and you just like stay over at the campus one night and just like have lots of games and fun. Um, they have a whole lot of fun activities and parties and it's just a lot of fun and you meet a, li a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> you meet a lot of different people who have like different backgrounds too from different schools and then if they end up joining a lot of my friends from that summer have also joined and you get to like hang out together as a, a recent college grad group um, and for the design itself I think I got to work on a lot of different things um, I got to do a lot of usability testing at, um, for my own designs which was pretty cool and I got to interview real life PayPal customers which I've I, from school, I learned how to like talk to different people and interview and ask them questions. But when I was actually an intern, it was a little scary just forming the questions and asking the right questions to customers to kind of get a sense of what the design is. And it was an eye-opening experience that I probably would have never gotten the chance to do in school itself. So it was definitely a learning experience. Fabulous. Um, we have uh, such a, a wealth of experience and different backgrounds up here. I'd love to know if anyone has any questions out in the audience. Yeah. <coughs> Mickey? Hi, my name is Mickey. Uh, I have a question for Tom, actually. Uh, so I also came from uh, an advertising agency, and I was wondering, how would you describe the transition from making ads to designing for user experience and UI? Oh, that's a good question. Um, one thing that's really different is that you're no longer working on a whole bunch of different clients. Um, you're working on, you're working sort of towards one goal, which is the betterment of PayPal, I guess. Um, but it is also similar because you'll work on so many different kinds of projects that it's almost like working for totally different clients altogether. Um, it, but also, uh, when I was working in an ad agency, it was way sort of fast-paced and yeah, very I mean, stressful. Yeah. And um, you'd be working until uh, you'd have like two days that run into each other because you never go home, um, stuff like that, which is nuts um a fantastic experience and really taught me uh really kept my work ethic alive i guess um but uh here it's very different so you'll work more steadily on projects that are paced over acceptable time periods rather than uh we need this tomorrow we have no money um <laughs> but it needs to be done by the time i get into the office um so, so that's probably the biggest difference is the the pacing and um the, the range of different things you'll work on. Um, but I still find that I work on so many different kinds of things that I don't get bored or anything like that. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's really good to know. Thank you. Good question. Anyone else have anything? Where are you? Ah. Hi. Can you please um, explain like a day in the life as a user experience designer? <laughs> oh dear. Go, David. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess for me, it's mostly working with different uh, disciplines throughout the team, uh, communicating your designs to the product owners, communicating the, your designs to developers. So as what um, Maddie said before, it's mostly about the soft skills that you need to do every day. You need to send... Not, hopefully not a thousand emails, but some emails so that everyone will be aligned and design sometime. But that's it, I guess. <laughs> Talking to a bunch of people. I would say um, for me, um, every day is different. Uh, it, I think some of the other folks have may have different experiences, but it seems that every day is unique uh, depending on what you're working on. Um, one day you could be sitting in uh, the research lab and, and watching users uh, test a new prototype. Uh, that could happen for two days. The next day you might be sketching. 
Um, the night, next day you may be in meetings all day. So it, it really varies. Um, maybe you could talk a little about your, your experience. <laughs> I guess it's pretty similar to what Damon said. It's like it really varies day to day. Um, just starting, um, a lot of it was like learning the different things that PayPal has. Like they have so many acronyms, and I had to like learn all the acronyms. And then after you get a hold of like just those steps, um, working on projects, um, I think in the mornings I usually have like a one on one with my manager, and like we either talk about the work I have and then just show it her show her my work to get some feedback and then throughout the day I like work on different things on the various projects I'm working on and then go to other people for like content advice or like visual design advice and then go back to like wireframes and like either prototyping or something like that so it really depends on the day I, I think they could also go back to one of your earlier questions about specializing in a certain area I think there's a lot of uh, discussions about um, product designers versus UX designers versus visual designers and 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 how that all works um, I think it's something we've been discussing a lot internally and 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 what is what are the roles of these different disciplines um, it seems that the more skills you have the more different things you'll be doing from day to day if you're strictly focused in just creating amazing visual design your day might be more consistent um, but I, th I think we're at a time right now where the idea of the product designer is, is changing uh, what people's day-to-days day um, look like. Also, um, in s software development, where we're not waterfall, where you're doing something and you hand it off to somebody else. You're doing a lot of things with a lot of different people. Um, so that's sort of changing the day-to-day -day of, of what a designer might, might be doing. That's true. I think when I was there, I, I was able to like handle a lot of stuff from visual design to prototyping to like actually making wireframes. So you get to touch a lot of areas in like the design process as well. Coding now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah coding as well. iOS, HTML, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever gets the product shipped to customers. Yeah. So instead of maybe a day to day, I mean, we work in an agile environment. So maybe it's two weeks at a time where um, there's some time spent. Um, understanding your use cases and your personas and sometimes it involves going to the field talking to people or going to the lab and and uh, viewing years of research um, then you know like what Jeremy was saying all the nuts and bolts of design you know whether it's sketching prototyping and and, and things like that um, talking to product owners talking to technology to, to make sure it's coded up correctly get into the lab again and so you know it, it's it truly is never the same day twice there's is you know, not to say it's just you know like totally unpredictable but um, I think there's enough things to, um, especially like what Damon said, if you have more skills on the table, you're going to be involved in a lot of these things where, um, you know, from concept inception all the way to um, handing off to te dev teams and things like that, you're going to play a role in there. Anyone else have anything to ask? Yeah. So mine touches on something that you discussed, and it's, Right, coming into a position, and anyone can address this as well, coming into a position, and even if you're at a role for a period of time, three years, something like that, how much room is there for career growth at PayPal, and how much, I mean, I, I know some of you have been there longer. Have you actually seen some upward mobility in terms of what you do from day to day? Is my manager here? Yeah, right. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's again, you know, it's about your manager. So if you have a manager that believes in you and, and is in touch with what in the world you're doing, that helps a lot. Uh, I've been blessed to have an amazing Tom, manager. Ask about that? With the, with the <laughs> yeah, Tom, I manage Tom, so he's not allowed to answer this question. Uh, but in, in what I was saying earlier, you know, like if we hire someone because we think they have a certain skill set and they start to demonstrate that they really excel and are passionate about something else I think we're um, because of the size of the company I think we're great about <coughs> about moving a person forward in into what they want to do um, again it's 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 about having a good manager which everyone has said a thousand times if your manager cares about you and you have a good relationship then you're gonna you're gonna get the chance to do whatever you want to do to move forward um, and we're we also one thing that PayPal's great about is throwing around our money so Wait, uh, <laughs> yeah are you getting more money than that no uh <laughs> not not in terms of salary but um we we have uh paid training so if you want to go to a conference or a training 
um, your manager will never say no to that. They'll pay to fly you somewhere to go to a UX conference or something um, or a workshop. I, I A couple of years ago, I went to a, a workshop at Cooper. It's just down the street here. Um, and those things aren't cheap. And that and that's because PayPal believes in making their employees better as as time goes forward, rather than repl- trying to replace them with younger and better people. Tom, Tom, you should remember and and pull that out whenever I, your manager your manager your manager will never say no. <laughs> and what was your name again? No, we we actually have a case where. Um, uh, a gentleman that we all work with um, had been with the company as a content writer for a number of years. Um, on the side, he does uh, glacier climbing, photography, videography. Um, there came a need for storytelling, and he built a video team from scratch. And so now we've outfitted him with some of the coolest gear imaginable. Uh, he has a team of, I think, about six people um, that basically does all the videos, internal and external videos for PayPal. So that came from a hobby that he had and a passion that he had. Um, and, and this guy was a was hired in as a content writer. Um, so that kind of shows you, like, if you um, show what you are able to contribute um, as long as there's a need for it, um, and even if there wasn't a position for it, we created that position for him. And so um, there's a pl- lot of opportunities. That's the beauty of having a, a company the size of PayPal. Um, there are always going to be new needs coming up, and if you can find something that you're passionate about that isn't being addressed, there's someone willing to listen. Do you all still have time for your hobbies and passions outside of PayPal? <coughs> I have kids, so no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyone have additional questions? Yes. Hi. Um, should I sit this time? Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Effie. Uh, first year in AAU, and thanks all for the panel talk. It's Okay. Mike is on. All right. Uh, well, um, as I I come from a different prog- uh, b- different background, so I have a question on how do you guys evaluate a candidate like from uh, like periods of courses from different background and then graduate from a UI UX program such as like web design and media. Because my friend uh, he recently graduated from uh, uh, NYU and then. Uh, he got a, he, he was studying the industrial design and then he got a job uh, from the symphony commerce uh, as a product designer so i would love to know how do you guys evaluate candidate from like a different background and then transfer converting to like front end or back end and also um, the second question is uh, do you guys have the business designer such a job in paypal and then because my What's myself is design? from yeah. uh, business, so um, I don't know. Uh, my 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 um, instructor Gibby, uh, he's from uh, uh, he's from he's from a US <laughs> UX six, uh, yeah he's from a UX company, but I totally forgot his name his company's name. But he had that position in his company and he told me that uh, business uh, designer is the the one that communicate the most with the de- uh, business development guys mm-hmm. and also the marketer so probably they break down the process for for UI and UX I don't know as a media in between so yeah we I, we don't do um, we don't bre- our company isn't broken down that same way so we do have a lot of like kind of channels and levels of communication which it sounds like that was just a, a business designer was a person that was kind of in between a few um departments right so we have was it, was it professional de- was it professional services kind of thing or cuz you cuz we do have a professional services team but they don't really leverage the UI pa- team that we have internally is that Hmm. That sounds kind of closest to what we do, Darwin. Yeah. So, uh, no, yeah, I mean, everyone has different yeah. names for everything to be super special and proprietary. But uh, so w- to give you an idea, so Tom and I are in a, a bit of a different team from um, the rest of the, the people up here. We work in the global brand team. And so we interface a lot with marketing, uh, business and consumer marketing. 
what are their objectives and and I won't break down like all the different roles and responsibilities but we work a lot with um them to get out um landing pages optimizing paypal.com uh, marketing and brand communications that sort of thing so um there's different I don't know if this answers your question at all but here's some insight to paypal so there's some different aspects of the design world here and we'll also support uh some of the business development stuff and and uh, with a big company like PayPal, there are people that um, do tons of different things, business development being one of them, and they have a need for design somewhere. A small thing like um, designing a postcard for them or a big thing like designing an experience, and they come to discover that these kinds of teams exist. And frankly, I think they, I don't know if this is the same for you, but we find them coming to us and saying, I have, I didn't even know you existed. What what do you guys do and what can you do for me? Um, so we, we end up working with a lot of random people in that way uh, from time to time. Um, but I don't know if that answers your second question at all. But. Yeah. And then in terms of the f your first question was about evaluating people that are changing roles. Is that right? Um, you know, for me, uh, that makes, th that's not a big deal for me. It, nothing, actually, honestly, when I'm hiring somebody, I look at a portfolio and say, is this good work that's thoughtful and fits my aesthetic or the company's aesthetic? And um, if your background is in, um, you know, animal training, but you're just, you ha happen to whip out some awesome, really thoughtful <laughs> designs, then I will interview you. Like, it, it, it makes no difference to me. Um, and, and frankly, like, if you have a background that's completely outside of design, that's probably going to be a great addition. I shouldn't say this to design students, but <laughs> like, but you know, I'll say like your hobbies are interesting things to hear about in interviews from time to time because that a different perspective brings a different insight and will ultimately bring to a m uh, more complete answer to the problem, most likely. And Unless it's a really weird would hobby. Animal training would probably come in really handy with clients. I imagine it's great yeah. for dealing with marketers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and yeah, and in my world, you know. Yeah, dealing with yeah. third parties. Um, but in terms of like other design disciplines, uh, we have um, hard, had good success with people that came from print. Um, we had one person that came from industrial design before. Um, so it's really about the, the design process and what Jeremy was t saying before uh, about really understanding the space, understanding the people that you're serving. I mean, if they have that kind of mentality and, and they have that right process, it doesn't matter what they're applying it to, whether they're applying to a digital space, a print, print poster, a, you know, a structure, or things like that. At least they have, they're grounded in something. And then to Tim's point, I mean, if they have the, the aesthetics Right, and and it could be a different form factor. Can they apply it to something else? I mean, if we if we have some of those things, then yeah, of course we're willing to talk to them. We have a question back here. Hi. Uh, so when you're working as a UI designer, like when you're working on a specific project and a team, so what would be the specific questions you would want to know about, like before you start working on the role or the task you are given? My, as not a, as a non-designer, it's like what problem are we trying to solve? That's that's my number one thing. Whenever I go into a meeting where uh, someone says, "Hey, we need designs for something," it's like what are we trying to solve and who are we trying to solve it for? Uh, another thing is where does this fit into the greater, the broader context of what we what we do or the the broader story too? I think it's important, uh, particularly like at a large company, we are probably solving an adjacent problem somewhere else and. Uh, so where does this fit in? Like, where does in the customer journey where does that experience leave off, and where does this experience I'm going to be working on s pick up, and then you know uh, along the chain where do I drop off, and what's the next experience? Um, uh, from any from any part of design, that's important, I think. And then particularly UI design. I mean, you're obviously you're going to want to create some sort of connection there so people don't just get dropped off into your magical little world and then they leave your magical world and into another one which i know it, it's sometimes a challenge to to do to connect those dots but i think that's important i think also um to darwin's point about understanding the user um what does it mean to the business what kind of business value um obviously somebody's asking you to work on this um how are they going to measure if it was successful or not um, to the business? Uh, it's, I think that gives you a lot of context to how you address the problem. You, you sort of have, 
you have to balance user needs and business objectives, which is probably one of the most tricky things um, because oftentimes what's best for a user is maybe not best for the business. So you have to find that those are some of the tough conversations um, that you need to have with stakeholders. Unless you go to work for a startup. <laughs> then throw the business away and do it for the users. Any additional questions? Yeah. Did you hear that? What was, was it what percentage of our company are UX designers? Uh, across like all disciplines like with business, legal and and operations and all that stuff or <laughs> Yeah, it's like point zero zero one percent. Uh this is the whole team right here. <laughs> no, um it, it is a little bit disproportionate. We are um, a finance and tech company first. Um, that's not to say that design doesn't matter, but I think with a very small team, we are able to make a very large impact. Um, I think one of the best things about working at PayPal um, in design here is that um, in foundations and the product areas and brand, we're not just working on this one little section of a site. We're not responsible for, okay, what you know, where does that dot go or something? You know, we we actually have a lot of control over like large experiences. Um, so I think, even though the numbers are disproportionate, I think the impact is huge. Well, we're kind of drawing to a close. I kind of wanted to um, ask you all. We started this by asking, um, what advice would you give your younger self? I'd like to know if there's one piece of advice going down the line you'd give to these folks specifically who are coming into the current design and tech climate. Um, I guess my one piece of advice would be definitely to stay curious and just keep learning. It doesn't stop at school and in your last year of school have lots of fun. <laughs> I think it's an exciting time. Um, there's so many great things happening in, in technology right now. Um, and I think we're just really at the, at the beginning. Uh, so look for great opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of jobs in mobile right now, but I think there's also going to be a lot of great jobs um, in connected experiences, um, more experiential um, opportunities where where uh, devices are part of part of the full experience. Um, how how do we connect with um, the home, and how do we connect with our cars, and how do we connect with um, retail spaces? I think. Um, you're, you're in a great space, you have a great education, and uh, the future is going to be exciting for you. Uh, mine would be to, to network. Uh, don't, don't just stay in your comfort zone. Um, you know, you're hired in to do something, and, and don't just put up the, you know, blinders around you. Network across the company. Um, get to know people in HR. I mean, uh, Tim and I have uh, worked pretty closely now for, what, about a year and a half in uh, really ramping up um, the internship program and RCG program for design. Um, get to know your legal partners. They'll keep you out of jail. <laughs> um, yeah, just network across the company because there's so many opportunities out there. Uh, my advice would be very tactical. Um, on your portfolio, people that are going to be hiring you are not, they are going to get 100 portfolios to look at in one day or in one session. So um, don't put up a ton of work. Put up a few pieces that are great that really represent what you do and your strengths. Um, put those up front. Do not include a picture of yourself on the front page of your of your portfolio. We don't care what you look like. You could be a complete mutant, and if your work looks great, we'll hire you. We'll find out what you look like later. So, lead lead with what do you do, what's your value, and a few good pieces. Don't put in thirty pieces. Just put in three or five that are great. And then if you are including student work. I don't think people do that much these days, but back in the day, uh, I would see a lot of portfolios of student work that would be people would try to be passing off as real work that they really did for these companies. W everyone can see that it's student work. We know it's student work com coming from a mile away, and it's totally cool that it is. 
Um, so just articulated as student work. Otherwise, y you kind of look like a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> if we go to interview, we're like, yeah, okay, you, you obviously didn't work on the Tesla branding. This was like an <laughs> experiment you did. So, uh, Just to piggyback a little bit on that, um, just keep in mind that your portfolio is really there to get you the interview. It's not to tell us your whole life story. Um, I think Tim talked about earlier is the funnel. Um, I mean, they'll they'll scrub through a bunch of resumes to get us to look at portfolios. We'll look at portfolios to see who we want to call on the phone. We'll have a little conversation to determine who we want to bring on site. So it's all a process, and everything kind of whittles it down. So don't feel like you have to put everything on there. Keep it focused. Keep us interested. Because if, if I can't navigate your site because you've got too much stuff on there and all the good stuff is hidden, I might not want to call you. So keep it focused. Know who you're, you're targeting for. Uh, I would say be open to learning as much as you can in any way you can possibly find to learn. Um, be very confident in the work that you have in your portfolio. I think Adam said it earlier in his presentation. Just put up what you're really confident in, the work that you love, that you love to present. Because uh, if you're trying to present work that you're not that that strong about, then you probably won't look as good. Um, that's about it. Um, I guess for me, never stop doing side projects. Um, explore your passion projects on your spare time, because that's where you get most of your learning aside from your day job. So always keep exploring. And that's as good a note as any to stop on, I think. Uh, thank you all very much for sharing uh, your thoughts and experiences with us. Uh, and thank you for tolerating a first time moderator. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much, PayPal. <laughs>